Good morning, everyone. It's Monday again, and I'm here uh, uh, with uh, another um, technique video for you. Um, we, I have been working all weekend on making some earrings with vintage, and I'm a little messy here, <laughs> but some powders and stuff that I've been playing with. And um, my craft sheet right here is an old one, old messed up stain and dirty one that I cut up into pieces, and so I've been using this just the small one to, to work on my earrings with. But these are what I'm using. Vintage is um, from Spellbinders and it's some it's a, a line of um, vintage looking uh, metal uh, earring and or ring or necklace or whatever kind of parts. You know they just come in all shapes and sizes and you can do a lot of different things with them. Let's see what some other things I got here. Here's a B. Um, let's see some of them are dimensional. Here's some some, also some other bees and so um, but what I've been working with this weekend is the earrings. I want to show you um, some that I've made and how I did it. Well, let's see, let's leave this here because it says it's a better background. So here is a set. They come uh, three to a pack. Well, no. I'm sorry. The ear wires come three to a package, and then uh, the earring bases come just, uh, you know, a set to a package. And I want to kind of show you that they have uh, sort of a floral design on them. I hope you can see that. I'll put a close up picture. And so, what I've done, let me get the ones that are kind of alike. Okay, so I took some Onyx Vintage Patina on this one, and I also used um, Ochre, and I used Agate on these sets, and these come in a set of three, packages in a set of three. So what I did first is I um, put it out on my a uh, little craft sheet. I also have some vintage glaze because I wanted to make it transparent and I put a drop of each and mix it up together. I'm going to show you how to do that in a, in a few minutes. And then I took a, just a brush and spread it over. And then I took my vintage sanding block and I sanded it down so that the metal would come back through and, and it kind of shines. Then I took some six millimeter uh, little uh, rings. I have a cat here on there. I'm so sorry. And some beads. I went and bought some beads. I got several uh, different packages. And then I put the beads on there because they and there are three little holes at the bottom of these. So this one I just left only the the onyx on. This one I um, and this one too. I use the um, agate to color in the flowers and then the ochre to add a little bit of enhancement to the flowers as well. And then use different um, beads on them. Then have some more. For these I kind of did it the same way. Um, I used a little bit different color beads on each one of them, but I used the um, marine patina and the glaze together and did my background. And then I used um, it was the quartz on the flowers and then amethyst to enhance the flowers. And these also come packaged together in three. So I did those. Then I wanted to branch out a little bit and experiment a little. So on this one, these, I used um, Perfect Pearls. And I used it in, uh, this one is bronze. And what I did is I took a bottle of water because <coughs> Perfect Pearls needs water to set. And I spritzed it on my metal. <coughs> I took my, I'm sorry, I'm just getting over a cold, and I took my uh, Perfect Pearls brush 
and brushed it on. <clears throat> so sorry. I dried it with my um, heat gun. <coughs> Please forgive me. Then what I did was I took. Uh, let me see what I did. I used um, the patin the marine patina on the flowers. And then I took alcohol ink in pool and brushed over the flowers because I felt like they would, the um, marine patina was too light. So by using the patina, which is opaque, and brushing the pool over top of it, which is transparent, I got the shade that I wanted. And I really like this color. And then I used clear beads. So one more to show you. This one, I decided to use, um, let me see what I used. I used um, the quartz and the glaze on the as the base. And then I took my Twinkling H2O by Luminart in Key Lime. It's sort of a, a twinkling watercolor. It's solid. And you just put a drop of water in there, close it up for a few minutes, and come back and, and uh, you can, it's liquid. But what, or you can do what I did. I just, I have this tiny little brush, and I wet the brush, and I put a second here, you can kind of see a little hole there. I just kind of used a little swirling motion to get out what I needed. And that's what I painted the, um, the flowers with on here. And then I used the ochre to put the flower centers in. And then when I was finished, because I wanted to be sure, because this Twinkling H2O is a watercolor, so what I wanted to be sure is that I would lock it in is I used my glaze then as a sealer over top. And I think I also did that for the, um, for these, my perfect pearl ones. So you can use a variety of things on this metal. You know, alcohol inks work on metal. Uh, perfect pearls work on just about anything as long as you bond them. So, I thought that we, I would just show you a little bit how I do this with a couple of, of um, earring blanks. So, I want to put out a drop of glaze. And this, this dries pretty quickly. So, uh, you want to, to just put out enough for one set at a time. So, I'm going to go with... Um, Let's go with the uh, agate because I want to see. I have a I have a pin lying here lying here somewhere because the um, the spouts get kind of stuck. Oh, there it is, right here next to me. So I'm just going to stick my pin in there to loosen that up. Okay, so it takes just so little. And I'm going to grab my brush over here and just mix it up. And then I'm just going to spread it on there. I have out my old Tim Holtz um, piercer thing here. And I can use the, the tools. And, you know, you're not supposed to, to stick uh, sharp things into your um, craft mat. But this is my old one. And I've cut it up and it's torn and all that, so I don't care about this one anymore. And I'll just pin prick it without worrying about it. That's why what I why I tore this up and saved it when you know it was just too bad to use on my camera. <laughs> so have a little basin of water next to you so you can clean this out of your brush because you don't want to ruin your brush. or the point of your uh, piercer and I can just let that dry because it only takes a few minutes but I can also hit it with my heat gun now that metal is hot so you want to pull out the piercer again if you want to move it. And I have found that this basically just peels up and, and wipes off.
you can scrape it off with a scraper if you want to. Right now I've just got my old dirty towel that I use for just about everything. So and you can get most of that off of there. Scrape it up with your thumbnail a little bit if you want to. So now you can uh, hopefully see the um, uh, the flowers in detail. And I don't want to move my camera right now, but I'm going to use my phone to take a close-up picture of that for you before I go any farther with it. Now that that's over with. Um, okay, this is dry and it's cooled off just a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these uh, edges of my Vintage sander. I'm just going to put them up right up there and give it some good pressure and rub it in. And I dropped it. And that's going to polish up and make uh, the edges that are uh, the raised relief there shine and give you even more dimension. It looks really nice. There we go. And then there's also a polisher side, this wide end where you can just rub it across there and then it polishes it for you, makes it shine really nice. And you could stop there if you wanted to. And those are really pretty, but I'm not going to stop there. Let's see, let's take this little tiny brush and uh, let's use, well, before that, let's put something, let's put some color on our florals. You know, I think I'm going to try this um, mix of copper on just the uh, flowers parts. You know, I didn't sit down with a, a with a exact uh, thing in mind to to uh, make here, so we're just making it up as we go along. I'm gonna take my little brush and put it in there, and I'm just going to paint this copper right there. And that's you know way more than I'll ever ever need right there. And there's a little flower right there. <laughs> there's a little one there at the edge, and there's a little bit down here. Okay, so um, you want to immediately get that out of your brush. Okay, so now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little uh, piece of paper towel. I'm going to just lay it on there and pull some of that back out because it's a little bit more than I want, co more coverage than I want. <laughs> and it's kind of dry already, so I'm just going to use my fingers and kind of maybe play with it and rub a little bit of it back to kind of tarnish it a little bit. I hope you can see that. I'm not sure if you can. But that kind of works. My fingers worked better than the paper towel, so I'm going to remember that and just do it with my fingers. So, and then, let's see, let's go ahead and take this ochre Put just a little bit on or not <laughs> okay time for the pen again <coughs> okay tiny little bit take my little brush and I'm just gonna pop flower centers in there So, um, that quickly, that easily, we've got a set of earrings. And then what we need to also do is to add the beads on to the bottom. Let me wipe these, this up. <laughs> With the six millimeter rings. need six rings because you have three holes in each one and I think let's see I think that the gold beads here the shiny gold ones would work really well 
with these earrings. <laughs> I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do all of these. But I am going to... I'll do one of them for you. Make sure I find another gold one. also could have the choice of some of these beads. Actually, I think those are a better choice now that I get them out here because they're kind of copper looking and that is what um, the mixative that we used is. It's copper. So I'm going to switch over to those. It's going to pull them out real quick here. Okay. Pull these off to over and put them back in my bag before they roll everywhere. And I'll just show you how to how I put one of them on. I, just, I take my little ring and pull it apart a little bit hard if you have nails. I don't have nails right now. And I put it on top. I put the ring on. And then I pick up the earring and then hold it with the, the ring up. And then I use my little tools to put that ring back together. And that way, it's not the, the shape of the ring is not distorted, and it's very quick, very easy. So you know, I'll finish these and I'll put them together and and show you a picture of them. So I'm going to pull these over to the side just for a minute, and we'll do one more. And please excuse me, I'm so sorry, I still have a cold. So um, let's uh, work with some alcohol inks this time. I need to put um, an opaque background down <coughs> because otherwise I'm pretty sure that the alcohol inks just would not show up. Let's let's find out, but I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't show up. Let's go ahead. Let's put light brown on and see if that does. Now it pretty much just blends right in because they are completely transparent. So. It's, it's nice, but it's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to blot that off of there. And I'm going to go ahead and put down this snow cap opaque background. And I'm going to spread it around. you could use these earrings just as they come because it's a, a really pretty bronze but you know then that wouldn't be any fun to you know adding to, you would miss out on all the fun of adding things to them okay now put my wa my brush back in the water for a second okay so um Let's start with, uh, I'm going to start with terracotta. <laughs> or no, maybe rust. Okay, let's start with rust. And I could put it straight on it, but I think I'm just going to put it out on my sheet and then use my tiny little brush to just kind of pull, pull it in different places. Okay, let's go with some terracotta. I pulled out some fall colors, so let's try that, see what we get. Now yes, I am covering up my white base. I put that on there so that our alcohol ink colors would show up. Uh, let's see, I've got some red pepper. Let's try that.
and then I've got some latte but I think what I really need is a uh, yellow or an orange to give it some pop so <laughs> let me uh, pull some of those out okay so I've got sunset orange and I've got sunshine yellow okay that's looking pretty good I like the addition of that orange and let's bring a little yellow so you know I'm just layering these on top of each other to kind of see what I get okay I'm you know I'm liking what's coming up now with all of these different colors layered on top of each other and you know our white base is completely gone but that's all it was it's just a base so let me uh, dry these real quickly <laughs> I think I might pop a little bit more um, yellow back in there Okay, it's a little bit hot. <laughs> okay, so that maybe I need to take a picture. But first, I want before you know we're, we say we're finished, I want to take my sanding block. and that reveals those edges and gives us some shine so it really changes the look now I could also put some glossy accents over top of this I could put some of this this glaze over top of this the alcohol ink is is permanent but uh, if you want a better you know a different finish more of a shiny finish this is kind of a matte finish and you could do that so um, then you know I would uh, find some beads that would look nice with that and I'm you know from what I've got I'm thinking that these beads right here would work pretty well well nope not the black it's kind of a those would work really well <coughs> with these earrings okay so you know you can just you know have a lot of fun and they don't take any time at all as you can see so there's one other thing I wanted to show you and <coughs> medium massage works really well with vintage and they have a lot of different um, shapes they have turtles dogs um, they have bezels they have these labels they have dresses they have just so many things and, and then they also have some dimensional things like like these like this and but uh, there's um, a product called iced enamels and let me use that okay and this gives you an enameled finish and they come in a lot of different colors and this is a vintage color this is called um, relic and it's turquoise so that's what it looks like inside and this is what it looks like after it's been melted now there is an iced enamels medium but I didn't happen to have that what I do have though is my Versamark stamp pad so I'm thinking that any um, embossing ink will work because my Versamark worked for me let me close these things so I don't knock them over and spill them get them out of the way and I'll show you just how easy that can work so I'm going to go ahead and, and use this one 
this is the one that I did before and you can put that over that and then you can put something in the middle another color or a picture or something but I'm gonna go ahead and I've got two of them I'm gonna go ahead and use this so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to saturate my middle shape with the Versamark ink I'm going to use a coffee filter. Oh, now I've touched it, so let me let me do that again. I'm going to be careful not to touch it. Okay. I'm going to spread my ice enamels over top. Okay, I'm going to pick it up by the sides. Then I'm going to put my leftover powder back in. Now because I put my stamp pad down there, you know, some of it's stuck. So I lose a little bit of that, but you don't lose much. Cover this again to make sure you don't dump it. <laughs> I'm notorious for that. Okay, and then we're going to heat it. And when I'm the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to hold it with my pick. And I'm going to start heating it. There we go. I'm going to start heating it from the edge, from the side. What this does is it heats up the metal to, to where the, um, the powders will not move. And then once that's heated to where it's just, you know, stuck there, then you can come over top and start melting your powder. And it's just exactly like embossing, embossing powder. You just watch it melt. You see a difference in the sheen when it when it melts into the enamel look. And you're done. And this is very hot right now, so I'm going to be careful picking it up. I'm going to leave it to cool for just a minute. So y then you can take, if you want to, you can take this and put it over top of that and have a frame that way. You know, you can do whatever you want to with this. You can use this as a background. There we go. You can use this as a background. It's hot. It's burning my hand. <laughs> to, um, like, put uh, maybe a, a photo or uh, a picture, paper, uh, designer paper or something on there as well. Or you can put another, uh, you can glue another metal embellishment to it and add it to a mixed media product. So that's what I got for you today is playing with jewelry metal and uh, the vintage and the um, media mixage. Uh, you can, can make jewelry or you can make things for your mixed media projects. You just have a lot of fun. So um, I'll see you next Monday. Bye.